OK, here's a question about graphs calling for a particular method. And you have to find the words in the question that tell you what to do. So we've got to find coordinates. OK, fair enough. But what coordinates we do we need to find? It's where they're the points of intersection. This word here, intersect, is the trigger that shows that I'm doing a particular method. So this video is about finding points of intersection. OK, well, I need to start with two graphs. And the points of intersection are the x and y values that make both of these equations true at once. So we call the situation simultaneous equations. But unlike the GCSE kind of simultaneous equations, we've got squared terms lurking around. And we're not going to do this by the GCSE method of elimination. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to substitute one formula into the other. Now, y is the subject of this formula, so that means I can easily substitute the one that begins y equals into the other formula. Uh, this minus sign means I'm going to be, have to be careful with brackets and signs, though. So let's copy out this equation here. So 2x minus y equals minus 3. And I've left a gap because this is what I'm going to substitute in. So when we're substituting in, it's safest always to use brackets. So inside these brackets, I'm going to put what y is. But to find out what y is, I need to refer back to the other equation. There it is. This tells me that y equals x squared minus 4x plus 12. So where y is, I replace it by the bracket containing x squared minus 4x plus 12. And now I've got an expression just with x's in. So this is going to turn into an equation that I can solve for x's. OK, so my first step has got to be to remove these brackets. So the 2x is unaffected, but this minus means I'm doing minus 1 times each term in the brackets. Minus 1 times x squared is minus x squared. Minus 1 times minus 4x is plus 4x. Minus 1 times plus 12 is minus 12. And I mustn't forget the equals minus 3. Now I've got to do some rearranging. Now. I can see that the x squared term is going to be a minus x squared. Um, so it may seem obvious. In fact, let's do it. Let's let's gather all the um, the terms on the left-hand side and have a minus x squared term. The alternative is to get a 0 on this side and get a p positive x squared term on the right-hand side. You can see we're heading towards a quadratic equation. So therefore, I do want to get a 0 on one side. I'll settle for the right-hand side for now. So if I have minus x squared, look at the x's. I've got 2x here. I've got plus 4x here. So I need plus 6x. And then in numbers, I've got minus 12. On the other side, I've got minus 3. So I'm going to be adding 3 to both sides. And if I add 3 to minus 12, I get uh, minus 9. And if I add 3 to the minus 3, I get 0, which is what I wanted. Now, this is a perfectly good quadratic equation, but it will look better, it will be easier to deal with if I multiply both sides by minus 1. So uh, x minus x squared times minus 1 is x squared, plus 6x becomes minus 6x, and minus 9 becomes plus 9, equals 0. So I've got a quadratic equation, which I can solve in the normal way. And this one factorizes beautifully. OK, so let's do the grid, x and x to make x squared. I want a 9 down here, and it uh, turns out that if I put a plus 3 and a plus, no, sorry, a minus 3 I need, and a minus 3, let's correct that properly, minus 3 and uh, minus 3, then minus 3x here and minus 3x there gives me this minus 6x. So that's great. So this factorizes as x minus 3 times another x minus 3 equals 0. So the possibilities are, check I've got a 0 here, I have. So x minus 3 could equal 0, or this x minus 3 could equal 0. And both of these lead to x equals 3. That one does as well. The possibilities are the same. So this is a quadratic with just one solution, x equals 3. Now at this point, I've got to remember what I was asked. I was asked all the way back up there to find the coordinates of points. Now, what I've got here is a value of x. So that's an x-coordinate 
but I need to find the y coordinate. So if x equals 3, I need to find the corresponding y. So going back to my two equations, I've got a choice. And I could actually use both, because if I've done this right, then both of these equations will give me the same value of y. There's not much to choose. I'm going to choose the one where the y is the subject of the formula. So y equals x squared minus 4x plus 12. So y equals x squared minus 4x plus 12. But of course, I'm going to take x to be what well, I know x is, which is 3. So it's 3 squared minus 4 times 3 plus 12, which is 9 minus 12 plus 12, which of course equals 9. So I've got x equals 3, y equals 9. So those are my coordinates, but I should give the, the answer as my point in coordinate form, which is 3, 9. So I've got an answer, which is the coordinates of the point where the gra of the graph's intersection. But I had to do more than that, okay? I had to describe the, re the ge geometrical relationship between the two graphs, okay? Well, if we go back to our equations here, um, we had um, a quadratic graph, okay, because it had an x squared in it. And then this graph I could just rearrange to get y equals mx plus c, so this is a line. So if I've got a parabola and a line, okay, then the possibilities for a parabola and a line are, I'm not going to try and draw these particular ones accurately, but if I've got one of these and a line, then maybe the line does that, or maybe the line does that, or maybe the line does that, okay? But all of these situations lead to different numbers of points in common. This one, there are two points in common, so that's got two solutions. For this one, it misses the parabola completely, so that's got zero solutions. But this one, where there's just one solution, okay, um, is when the line is a tangent to the parabola. Okay? And that's what I've got here. Because I had repeated roots of this quadratic equation, okay, I can see that this point here, there is only one common point, so I've got the case like this middle one here, this one here. So therefore, the line is a tangent to the curve. And that's how I get my mark for describing the relationship. And I'm done.